Chase Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It's a special Thanksgiving night presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. As this crowd rolled into U.S. Bank Stadium, they were bundled up, jackets and scarves, downright cold outside on this November evening. But all good here inside as we welcome you to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tonight, it's the final morsel in our Thanksgiving feast, and we've got a good one in store between the New England Patriots and the Minnesota Vikings. Time to set the old turducken aside and get ready for football as here we go on a Thanksgiving night. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. The Vikings offense coming out for the first time and in his fifth season leading this crew, coming off his third career Pro Bowl nod, Kirk Cousins. And one nice thing you can always say about Kirk Cousins is that he's consistent. Always puts up nice numbers each and every year. If there is a downside to his game, it's been the lack of playoff success. All in all, though, a formidable starting quarterback at a time in the league where it's tough to find your franchise guy. A run there with Cook on first down, but it won't get him much. Maybe a yard. Second down coming up. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold it just a yard. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Patriots take over. Now we get a first look at this Patriots offense, and of course leading them for his second season. Last year's Rookie of the Year runner-up out of Alabama, Mac Jones. Mac Jones absolutely believed in himself coming out of high school. Went to Alabama despite the fact there are many high-profile quarterbacks already on the roster and blossomed into a Heisman Trophy candidate in his final season with 41 touchdowns and only four interceptions. Steady, consistent as a passer, doesn't have the biggest cannon for an arm, but can stretch the field and lay those passes in on the deep ball. Now Jones. Into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And the Vikings are going to take possession of the football. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Following the interception, Cousins. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. On play action, Cousins. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Joseph's got it. 
Saints have a 3 0 lead. So, golden field position there is squandered as they can muster only a field goal. Yeah, you were gifted a first to goal situation, but I have to give credit to the defense. They were brought out in a really tough situation, so give them credit for holding them to three. That's a pretty nice accomplishment. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. Their second drive here, the ball game, Charles. Remember last time they threw the interception, but the defense held up. It bent a little, but didn't break, only giving up the three points. Yeah, obviously they left some points on the table there their last time out, but boy, they have to thank their defense for holding the opposition just three after they threw the pick. Their turn now, back out on the field, put together a good drive, and get some points of their own. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They run with a fourth-year man that is Damian Harris. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 39, Jones, a quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Throwing Jones. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And the Vikings are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and 10. And throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 27. Cousins gives way to Cook. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Second down, they go right back to Cook. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. On third down, Cousins got an open man finding Jefferson. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, Cousins. Get rid of it. He's taken down. Matthew Judon in there to take him down. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Throwing. Cousins. Middle of the field, Jefferson. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. 
And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. To throw, Cousins. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them, knowing what we just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've got to run out of your running plays, fire another one into the end zone. The kick by Joseph is good, and that will make it six to nothing. They already had the early lead, and they get the interception, Charles, and now they add three more with the field goal. Yeah, they're in control of how this game is playing out so far. You mentioned the early lead. Now they're expanding on it, getting plays on both sides of the ball. A winning recipe if they can keep at the line ready to go as the offense comes out here Charles remember they threw the interception last time out but they were moving the football down the field looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points but then the pick ensued and because of that there's no way you can call the last drive a success yes there are things to build on because they found some play calls at work now they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover that plagued it on the last one looking to throw again on second down Jones open receiver here complete it's Parker counting down toward the midway point in quarter one from the midfield strike they'll look to throw complete Hunter Henry with a grab so he stopped for no gain and it'll be second down as a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 41. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got Smith here. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Harris running straight ahead. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for first. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. On third down, here's Harris. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. I also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Second and eight. Back to throw. Jones. He gets it complete to Harris. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. A gain of 8 there on the play. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. Looked like a pretty good, safe play right there. No, he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there. Hits his guy out in the flat. Yeah, so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about 
in your progressions, you're either throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down. But earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down, a nice safe throw and a good one. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Off the play fake, Jones. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. They got to get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. On second down, this is Harris. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Stevenson is into the end zone. Touchdown, New England. Able to punch it in on third down. Makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead, as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. Nick Folk for the point after. It's up and good, so they go the conservative route instead, and it gets them a 7-6 lead here in the opening quarter. now set to boot it after his guys put six on the board. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. They're kind of searching for that magic elixir. You know, they're moving the football a little bit, but not with any great consistency. I love that term you just used, elixir. <laughs> right? School. Old school. I love that. Because you don't want to put too much pressure on your defense as well. All right, if you're kicking field goals, that's great. But your defense has to keep going out there and holding the other team. You're not giving them any cushion to work with. And that gets tougher and tougher as the game goes along. Put the ball in the end zone and get sixes. That's the ambrosia that they're looking for. That ambrosia. Erase this deficit. A game there of 21 yards. Cousins now to throw on first down. His throw incomplete. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. To throw on second and ten. Cousins. Open man is Osborne. He's got it. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 34-yard line. Left side, Cook, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Throwing his Cousins. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Joseph's got it. And they jump. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. On the return, Marcus Jones from the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped it to 23. Now 
Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. The offense coming back out here. Plenty of energy ready to roll, looking to just add to what they have been doing after scoring a touchdown, Charles, their last time out. And that's a great feeling to have on the sideline, partner, knowing you just won the battle against the opposing defense. And since they came off the field, I'll guarantee you all they want to do is get back out there because they know they have the upper hand on that defense right now. On second and seven. Jones. He's going to let one go deep for Parker. A leap in. He's got it. He got it. A big play there for New England. 41 yards. Well, what do you think? Maybe he got away with one. I mean, he's thrown two picks already. That looked pretty dangerous. And it had a little hang time on it. So what he needs to do right now, hug it out a little bit with his guy because he went up and made a play on the football and kept him from potentially throwing that third interception. There's some trust in there. There's also some hope. Now a first down carry for Harris. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their step. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Through one quarter, 9-7 our score. They hand this off to Harris. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four on second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. From the 17, Jones. that time wound up having it knocked free but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it on the give this is Harris and he's gonna come up well short as they rally up to stop him at about the 16 four yards on the pick up there but it's gonna take him to fourth down here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal this a 33 yard attempt Folks, kick is good, and they take the lead here by a point, 10-9. to nine. Sit together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? didn't get the touchdown, but that's actually okay. They got three points, it will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all, to me, that's a good Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. He goes down and gets the job done for them, but I'm not sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on down. Absolutely no I think his teammates would do okay. They just get the extra points as well. It's a game of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. Following a good run by Cook. Here's another first and 10. Play action now. Cousins. He got his tight end over the middle. TJ Hawkinson. And they're going to get this to about the 44 yard line. Tight ends just use their size and their strength to occupy as 
Ross Bates makes a body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took the dance classes in his background with his footwork. Now this one was tight end out on the right side. And he'll be brought to the inside the 40 yard line. That's a staple of this offense. Drag down to the tight end. And he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective game nonetheless. Of 
knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quicker. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes his going forward. That's what you want to see out of your bass. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense. Yeah, they give him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Play fake. Cousins. Well, caught there by Osborne. And yeah, he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Second down and six now from the 42. To the air again, it's Cousins. And it's not enough on the throw there. Got a lot of speed and incomplete. But the defender certainly did forget about it, blinking out of bounds. Got it ready and waiting to pick him up on coverage. And that throw had no shot. And here's Cousins. That's into a foot on the interceptor. Picked up by Jawan Bentley. And the Pats are going to take over at their own 41. So consecutive interceptions here early on in this one. And it may be setting the tone, Charles, for a game where the defense really takes center stage. And don't you think that both offenses? Really catching a bit from their coaching staff about avoiding these turnovers. As you see in a row, I think the teams are trying to take advantage. We know that. But can one of them break away and take control of this game? They'll run with Harris. Got a result here, a pickup of eight. It leaves him with two to go on second down. Down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. Is there smart? You start to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he works it to the 30 yard line here, right at the 30. 97 yards rushing for now on 17 carries. So first and 10 now from the 30. Look at this. Jones. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. And the Vikings are going to get the football here as he gets this past the 20 yard line. Ten at their own 21. Trying try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Osborne. on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Open day, and it's Thielen, it's complete. Touchdown, Vikings! Aaron Thielen, 70 yards, and the Vikings are able to move back in front. Bring Joseph on for the extra point. Set to go. 
And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this relationship really comes into play. How the coach can the the offensive coordinator. Sometimes they just make a joke. <laughs> All right, guys, have your fun. All right, throw it out of yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. They'll run again with Harris. And he'll take a shot of 45 to 46. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Throw there as that's knocked down, down and incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again. They keep throwing it and pushing it down the to try to pick up their yardage. The throw over the middle, take it in. And this is going to turn into another first down. It's the tackle that's made at the Vikings 22 yard line. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. can only manage to get a couple second and eight coming up that's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball held them to a gain of two and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays second and eight now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game and that'll be complete well, just as he let that go and now it's third down eighth play of the drive fourth coming and they need eight yards on third down Zappi off play action. Rush coming in. He's taken down. And the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. He made his first attempt. This from 45. Folk's kick is good. And the lead is back down to three here at 16-13. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks will tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out. But I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. That's to Dalvin Cook, the running back. Yeah, he's going to have a first down on a gain of about 10, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. Now Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Throwing again, Cousins on second and ten. This one brought in by Jefferson. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. They go play action. Cousins. And he goes down. It's a Patriots sack. Devon Godshaw getting in there and dropping him. It seems to me that our friend, old momentum, <laughs> I think he's definitely changed teams in this game. It's only going to grow after that sack, and now, heck, they can get the ball back here and possibly even get the lead. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Fair catch. 
called for right around the 11 yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Pats will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. First and 10, Zappi. Open man to tight end Henry. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. They run with Harris. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Now the Patriots moving quickly, hustling up to the line. He's got it complete to Aguilar. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Zappi to throw on first down. Open man here, the tight end, Henry. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. A nice throw there for the first down. And this is a big moment for this young man under center. You know, he's had a few months now to get acclimated to life in the NFL, but you got to think, a little extra pressure here, right, CD? I mean, you're getting the start on Thanksgiving in front of the national audience. Especially since you and I both know he's watched this game since he was about four, five, six years old and dreamed of playing in it. In fact, his family sent us some of those videos of he and his family in the backyard playing their turkey bowl games themselves. So now he's going from the backyard to the big stage, and here he is. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And they'll get it down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Pats at the line ready to go. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now, here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team? A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Andrew Booth picks it up, and the Vikings are going to take possession of the football. First down, here's Cousins. And he'll just get rid of it. They started this drive backed up against the wall by the turnover. But I love their fight. Planted their feet and forced the incompletion on first down. Now a throw here. Hold in. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. They like going to him in the slot and catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him. Why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. And all the way down inside the five to the four. 57 yards rushing for him now on what was his tenth carry of the ball game. Trying the power game with Hale. And touchdown, C.J. Hale taking it in from four yards out. And the Vikings take advantage of the field position on the turnover to cash in for six. Joseph connects on the extra point. And they will take 
a seven-point lead. Just a four-play drive that time. the fair catch a signal for and take it. The Pats at the line ready to go. This offense returning out there and really you remember the last drive Charles it was over before it even began. They threw the interception on the very first play. And what that means is for all these guys it's been a while since they've been out there going full speed so they've got to get everyone back out there run a couple of your go-to plays Make sure you get your offense oiled up a little bit. They've got to be able to start fast, but they've got to be efficient as well. Especially the quarterback. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Oh, now a running play here with Smith. And now a pause. It looks like we have a Patriot injured on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Now Zappi will go to the air. And he will find his big tight end over the middle. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Here's Harris. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, a fight for it, and this is caught. It's caught. That one good for 37 yards. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. A give to Harris. And inside the 20 before he's brought down 11 more yards that go around a first down as well we use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field in this case it really fits doesn't it how about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving they'll keep it on the ground Harris again and he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line the tackle there by Patrick Peterson the run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now Zapp. Quick hitter here. It's complete. Touchdown. Nelson Aguilar. A 14-yard touchdown. And the Patriots go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. When you're a great route runner, it makes you that much better as a receiver because now your quarterback trusts that you're going to be where he expects and he's able to deliver the ball on time. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he will get into the end zone as they will indeed claim a one-point lead. They didn't want the tie. They roll the dice and they take the lead. That felt like a tone setter, didn't it? Forget tying the ball game and feeling like we're just hanging with you. We're going to go ahead and push it to a one-point lead and that just changes the complexion of the whole game. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. He'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. 
He'll look to throw. And a third interception thrown by Cousins. Picked off by Juwan Bentley. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Patriot defense has a touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just want to take away the quarterback's throwing lane, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Extra point up and good by Folk, and the lead is up to eight. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And not the first time that they're coming back out off of a turnover, but the last one really hurt Charles that pick six and it feels like the whole team's infected right now doesn't it it's not just been one person it's kind of been a group effort where the mistakes have happened can they put that aside kind of start over and put together a nice drive second down they go right back to cook and he'll take the head 28 yard line Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. To throw is Cousins. Complete Jefferson to target. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first and ten, Cousins. Catches made by Hawkinson, the tight end. So the completion good for just three. And that'll make it second down. On play action, Cousins. He finds his man complete. That's Osborne. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They'll run. Here's Cook. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. We ought to come up with a T-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulders square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Cook makes the catch on the out route. And not much happening there. He's taken down, but a late penalty flag to the backfield. And this looks like a roughing call. Well, that flag puts them on their heels a little bit more defensively as the officials walk it upfield. Yeah, and they can blame the officials all they want, but bottom line, it's their own fault because, to me, that was an avoidable call. Stay focused and avoid major mistakes like that. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. On second down. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And they got three yards. That's enough. A conversion, and now it's first and goal. Cousins. Will be incomplete physical play on the football there and it's second down oh nice defensive effort there providing the hit as the ball got to the receiver separates him from the catch and normally he's a sure-handed target 
They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Johnny Munn, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings have come back to make it a two-point game. Goes right side. And he's got it. So they went ahead and went for two to tie the game, and it works out. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target the tight end. I love how he described it because you know he's going to have some length and some good catch radius, as well as a big body to keep him away from the football. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Pats at the line. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and ten. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 30 on second down. Zappi, throw left side complete. That's Henry. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. Zap now on first and 10. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Force the ball free second down well, thanks for joining us here on a thursday night in the nfl third quarter second and ten coming up harris running straight ahead four yards the gain and it'll bring up a third down the second down play call was not to pick up the first down it was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down so they were behind the sticks so to speak, they need to make up some ground, and they did. And they'll work this down inside the 30. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the foot. And he's going to be taken down. They sack him on one of the final play here on Thanksgiving night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The sack cost him only a yard. It's second and 11. This is Harris. About three yards there to the 27. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. They run again with Harris. And he will not make it to that imaginary line. Get to the ground at about the 23. It'll be a gain of four, but it won't be enough. It leaves them with a fourth down now. Have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. Now they throw it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Cousins throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. That is incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. 
Third and short yardage, Cousins. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Juwan Bentley. And the Patriots are going to take possession of the football. And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. When was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it, Kurt Coleman? Oh, yeah. Then with the Eagles. That's right. He's then against the, with the Eagles, and I believe it's against Washington and Rex Grossman. That's correct. The last run got six. Now second and four. On the give, this is Harris. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Zappi looking to throw it on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. They hand this off to Harris. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. 181 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. New England on third down. They've had plenty of success. Eight conversions, looking for a ninth. Here it's third and three. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Harris. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. A touchdown run there from a yard out. And the Patriots this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. Great field position has to be one of the best friends an offense can have. When you don't have very far to go, you should cash it in with points. So now a big spot for the Pats as they'll go for two. They're going to try and run. And he is into the end zone. The conversion attempt is good. And that'll give them an eight now set to boot it after his guys put six on the board. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. There's still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. Just a one possession game down eight. They'll be looking for the touchdown and two point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And he powers his way up past the 30. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Cousins in step with Jefferson that time. First down, Vikings. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. First down. Here's the run with Cook. Taken down. 442. Give credit to the defense. 
defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he's trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Now for the Patriots, D on third down. Cousins to throw it. That's made T.J. Hawkinson. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 39. A sizable 16-yard chunk there. The drive continues. A first down throw for Cousins. Side here in the fourth quarter. Nine yard line, second and six. They'll throw again. Cousins. We're going back to the same well. It's Hawkinson again. And the Vikings are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Now Cousins. from a yard out and the Vikings have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth and he will get into the end zone for two and this game now tied here in the fourth still time to work with on the clock but they wanted the tie now and they got it and I love their aggressiveness go ahead and get it done get the game tied now your team has the momentum and you're staring across the field saying let's see if you can match us so here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. Here's Jones to bring it out of the end zone. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Pats at the line, ready to go. They no longer have the lead after that last touchdown, all tied up in the fourth quarter, and a chance for this offense to mount a potential game-winning drive right here. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. They'll run. Here's Harris. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. And now they're in the hurry up. Now a first down carry for Harris. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Parker. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 37. 13 yards as the quick slant keeps the drive moving. Wide of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Up the middle, here's Stevenson. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Stevenson gets it again on second down. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Patriots with the football as we get your reset. They've got it first and ten as they search for a go-ahead score. Stevenson now on first and ten. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. 
Now the Patriots moving quickly, hustling up to the line. On second down, it's Stevenson. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. And all the way down inside the five to the four. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. A game-winning field goal would be a chip shot from here. Let's see how they play it on first and goal. Here's Stevenson. And he'll get it down close to the goal line, but not quite in. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Second and goal from the one. Oh, now a run play here with Smith. And that's a touchdown as they broke it. Our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. I don't know how many more of these my heart can take, my man. I just don't know. <laughs> Another big touchdown late in the game. They look like they're in control, but still, there's a chance. Block the extra point, go down and score, kick the extra point themselves. They can pull this one out. Yeah, but also on the sideline that just took the lead, you got to get your defense ready and the special teams unit for the kickoff coming up. Yeah, you're exactly right. You gotta pull everyone together and make sure they're still focused and aren't already celebrating a win. now set to boot it after his guys put six on the board. And with time of factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. So Kirk Cousins in the offense. Down by eight. 57 seconds to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. He's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Now Cousins. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. The Vikings are going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. Here's Cousins. There goes the deep ball in zone. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Devin McCourty picks it off. And the Pats have just about sewn up this football game. And I'm starting to wonder, Charles, if five interceptions, is that the last that we've seen of him? Well, I think that a lot of people hope that's the last they've seen of him in this game, probably including himself. If this were baseball, the manager would have been at the mound already and asked for the ball, and he'd be in there getting a shower. But in football, you might have to go stand on the sideline and watch the rest of it and see if your backup can do any better. Well, partner, under the lights in primetime, this offense, they gave the nation quite a show, putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them. And, Brandon, I think it's as simple as this. Some players, some teams, they're just meant for the big stage. And when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere, where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly, they show up and they show out.
today. From Ford Field in Detroit. It's a special Thanksgiving Day presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions taking on Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. Coming to you from the venue that hosted the Super Bowl back in February of 06, welcome to Ford Field in downtown Detroit. Today, our Thanksgiving coverage continues with a good one here between the Buffalo Bills and the Detroit Lions. It's been a tradition since the early days of the NFL, and we're off on Thanksgiving Day in Detroit. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. Detroit gets set to go on offense, and it will be the seventh-year pro out of Cal, Jared Goff, leading the attack in his second season as a Lion. And at one point, the ascension of Jared Goff was really, really strong. Back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, took his team to the Super Bowl, and came really within one quarter of winning it. But since that time, he's had bouts of inconsistency, and that's been the struggle for him as he tries to get back to the form he showed earlier in his career. Four yards, the result of the first play from scrimmage. Second down. They'll fake the give. Now Goff. It's caught. Mitchell. They'll give him four yards there. And that'll leave him with a third and two. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try to run here with Swift. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across the field and down to the 47. They'll get 17 that time, and the Lions have a first down. Off play action. Here's Goff. And he wisely will throw that one away. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. On second down, Swift. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. 11 yards there and a line first down. Now Goff. And this one almost intercepted. Not a good throw there. Nearly an opening drive, INT. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Goff a handoff here to Swift. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. It always helps when you get great run from your safeties, and when you get one who can actually read the play and get upfield and shut it down before it gets going, that's exactly what you're looking for. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. and it also brings up fourth down. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. 
Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Then we see the Bills offense take the field here at quarterback Josh Allen. And in this league, there are many quarterbacks who have their most success running the ball, while there are others who have big arms. There aren't too many guys who can do both. And at the end of many games, this guy leads his team not just in passing, but in rushing as well. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Off play action. Allen. And he'll be dropped just shy of the 35 the 34 a pickup of 17 on a play that originated at the 17 certainly no settling into the drive there they came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down now the fourth year running back this is Devin Singletary and he'll run for about five up close to the 40 Brandon five yards on that run Let's get back to the huddle and make sure you're back. You spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. But Charles, this Thanksgiving tradition, so great. I mean, going back essentially through the full century of the NFL, I know you probably have a lot of fun. Dawson Knox. And he is going to have the Bills first down as they wind up with a gain of 11 there on fourth down. Give them 11 on the gain there. And it'll be a Buffalo first down. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. It'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. Sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. And he gets it down to the 32. Seven yards there, first down. A couple of nice carries back to back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these aren't bare bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yards you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? More, five or more yards each time. That's what you're looking for in setting the tone and getting your offensive line going. Good sign on the opening drive. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. On play action, Allen. And incomplete on the deep ball. And coverage is certainly a staple of their defense. And it's built for plays like that, forcing that incompletion. From the 21, it's second and 10. Allen. He's got the hook up with Diggs. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Allen to Diggs there for a Buffalo first. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. Now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Devin Singletary. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Bills are on the board first here this afternoon. The Tyler Bass on for the extra point attempt. And it's 7-0 Buffalo. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run.
After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes the return. And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble to bring it out of the end zone as he's down at 27. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. And they had a long drive going last time, but it stalled out. But still, maybe something positive to carry forward from that last drive. Well, a few different things to carry forward. Number one, as you noted, they were moving it pretty well, so that gives them a lot of confidence. The second part is, keep your defense off the field. Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit. And last but not least, you've taken a good look at what you've done on offense, noted where the weaknesses are, and you know when you want to come back to them. Like when you're organized with your points. Well done. This will wind up a Lions first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. Once again, it's Swift. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. 54 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. They'll try the air now with Goff. And that'll be caught by St. Brown. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Goff to St. Brown for the Detroit first down. Swift going to try up the middle. And it's a fumble. Now this is picked up by the Bills. And he's able to bring it up five yards shy of midfield to the 45-yard line. And a little careless there, Charles, on that carry. And it's not just having two hands on the ball. It's tucking it away. It's using... And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. From the 41, Goff, complete to right. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is that right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. From the red zone now, Goff. Open man is Raymond. He's got it. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. They will run straight ahead of Swift. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Here's Gaw. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down, as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Badgley's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. Well, a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up the touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. With the football changing hands here, and as this offense takes a field, Charles, they'd be fine with more of the same on this upcoming drive. Last time out, they found the end zone for six. And they're certainly hoping.
hoping for more of the same, but the game plan, I doubt it'll just be a carbon copy of the last drive because I think this offense is ready to break out some new wrinkles and try some new things that might be hidden in their playbook. They want to use that confidence to its advantage while also keeping the defense from anticipating what's up next. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. Allen now on first down. Finding Knox there, complete. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. But that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Allen's throw taken in by Diggs. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the line 26. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. And he's able to motor his way down to the 16-yard line. 53 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Singletary again. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps him advancing the ball. Play action. Now it's Allen. He's got a man. It's his fullback. And the Bills are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Well, this has certainly been a nice drive with the way they've spread the football around. Here, they even get the fullback involved in the passing game. That's got to cause a lot of consternation on the defensive side. You've got to cover him, too. That makes things really difficult. And he takes it in across the chalk for a Bills touchdown. Reggie Gilliam taking it in from a yard out as his guys are able to extend their lead. And boy, that was a heavy set. I think they had three tight ends out there. The fullback, they just, you knew what they were gonna do. Yeah, they weren't trying to fool anybody at all, were they? There was none of this show you heavy set, bootleg it out, nah, nah, nah. Big guys up front, hand it to the big guy in the backfield. Here's Bash now for the extra point. This one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. They trail now 14 to 3, an 11-point deficit as they start things out with a first and 10. He's got a man complete, and they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Goff now looks to throw. And that 
going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now a give right side swift. Putting his way down to about the 35-yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Throwing on third, gone. And a throw there going to be incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Let's spotlight Devin Singletary as this offense comes back out. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I have no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated. I know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. The big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great, and what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. 65 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Here's Hallett. Gets this one to Morris. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. Nice idea, nice concept there. Line him up on the left side of the formation, let him sneak his way across, coming back underneath, put it in his hands, let him get a few more yards after the catch, too. Great way to utilize a tight end on the drag route. They'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Following the delay, here's second and nine. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Allen going to throw. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And he will not make it to that imaginary yellow line as they get him to the ground at about the 23. So on fourth down, out is Tyler Bass in the Buffalo field goal unit. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. The kick by Bass is good. And the Bills will add on to their lead. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, et cetera. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. So after knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So out now come the Lions. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach is trying for right, and it's intercepted. And he is going to 
score. It's a pick six and a Bills touchdown. But Charles, you can just see the frustration on the sideline. Safe to say that's not how they expected this series to go. The ball only went one way, and it was backward into their own end zone, courtesy of the pick six. And Brandon, how often do we hear offenses tell us before a game they want to end every series with a kick, right? A punt, a PAT, or a field goal? In case of a defense, they want to end with a punt or a takeaway. And we saw the takeaway right there, and it turned out to be a takeaway that turned into six points. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. And remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go-around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to look home. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Here's a handoff to Swift. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and... They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Out of the gun. Oh, that's going to be caught by Josh Reynolds. And he'll be dropped at the 36. It's a good gain of 18 on a play that originated back at the 18. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 36. On the handoff, this is Swift. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave the teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that game. The boss throw into the hands of Reynolds here. And he's got the first down as a tackle made at the Bills 21. A shotgun snap for golf. 